Welcome to Air Studio, I'm Ian Butterfield. In this video I'm going to be looking at the difference between royalty free and rights managed licenses for stock photography. One question I get asked a lot by people starting out with stock photography is whether they should sell their images as royalty free or as rights managed. There are pros and cons of both and in this video I'm going to look through some of the, uh, the pros and cons of both methods. Let's start by first of all looking at what you're doing when you are selling images for stock. You are not selling copyright. You are selling a license to use the image you are selling the rights to use an image and there are two forms of license, broadly speaking. One is royalty free, and the other is rights managed. Once an image has been sold under one uh, license method, such as rights managed or royalty free, you cannot sell it legally or ethically, I should say, under the other license method. So making a decision as to which method to use is important. Let's look first of all at what royalty free is. With royalty free, the client buys the image and the right to use the image however they wish, in whatever format they wish, wherever they wish. They do not have to buy it a second time. Once they have got it, they can use it however they want. This kind of license is very popular with businesses that are trying to build up a library of images which they can then use on their advertising, internal product, um, documentation, uh, on their website to get a consistent look across everything that they do. Now, because of the nature of a royalty-free license, the average fee for royalty for royalty free tends to be that little bit higher than the average fee for rights managed. The fee does vary from library to library, but the main factor that affects the fee is the size that the image is being purchased, the number of pixels in the, the version that they buy. So they can buy a high res version at one price or a small, almost thumbnail sized version at a much lower price. Because you don't know what a royalty free image is going to be used for, you need to ensure that every person or part of a person in a royalty free image is covered by a model release form. Most libraries will not allow you to sell images as royalty free without model release forms for individuals. If you've got identifiable property in the image, you will also need a property release to be able to sell as royalty free. And by property, I'm not just referring to buildings or things that people own uh, in terms of um, physical items, but also intellectual property such as trademarks. So, for example, if you wanted to sell an image of a Rolls Royce, you need a property release from the owner of the car, but if you've gone for a close-up of the, the mascot on the front of the car, or the RR logo, then you will need a, a property release for, from Rolls-Royce, because they own the rights to the design of a Rolls-Royce car, and in particular, their trademark, which is the, uh, the figurine and the logo. Rights managed images, on the other hand, the, the client is buying the right to use the image for a particular purpose. So, for example, that might be they're buying it to use with a magazine article. They're buying it for one particular advertising campaign. They are buying it for a particular poster that they're putting up um, somewhere. It's very specific uses. Once they have used it for that, they cannot use the image again unless they buy another license from the library. 
This has an advantage when you get your sales reports back. The, the advantage is you will get to know a little bit about how the image is being used. You will probably know which country it's being used in which media sector it's being used in, whether it's um, media as in newspapers, television, whether it's being used for advertising, um, that type of work. Which industry sector? Is it uh, the travel industry? Is it the pharmaceuticals industry? You will get to know in printed, if it's a printed image, what the print run is, and what size um, image it is within the printed material. And you'll get to know a date range that the image is being used for. Those are the, the particular details of the license. In terms of pricing, rights managed images are probably, on average, less than royalty free, simply because it's a one shot use. However, I say average because some royalty free sales can be very very low. I've had one which gave me less than the price of a pint. I've had one which was also a four figure sale. Most of them however are more towards the lower end of that and, uh, and the very high value sales are pretty rare especially these days. The biggest advantage of rights managed means that if the person buying the image wants to use it a second time, they have to buy a second license, and that's more money in the bank for you. There is a third form of licensing, and it's actually a subset of rights managed, and that's called rights protected, um, or exclusive rights. And here, the person is buying exclusivity to the image. That might be exclusivity in terms of where they're using it, which country or which continent. It might be exclusive about over a period of dates. It might be exclusive within an industry sector. In order to sell something as uh, rights protected, you need to know what the image is going to be, has been used for in the past to make sure it doesn't cut across any of the rights that you are now selling in an exclusive way. The problem here is that if you are selling images through multiple photographic libraries, they don't always report sales immediately. Sometimes there can be two, three months uh, time lag. So I would strongly advise if you're looking at being able to offer something as rights protected or, um, or exclusive, that you sell the image just through one source uh, so that you can always be sure where the image has previously been used so that you're not going to run into any conflicts of rights that you're selling. Now we've looked at the meaning of the different licenses, what I want to do is turn my attention to some of my own images and I just want to talk through those images and why I chose whether I'm selling it as rights managed or royalty free and what the pros and cons were with, with each of them. This first image of a keyboard I chose um, to sell as royalty free. I felt it was a business related image and that is the sort of image which might get purchased by some large corporation to use within um, documentation or as a background things. And it's the sort of image which they might want to use over and over again, but would never probably buy the full rights to. They might use it as a background to something or as a composite as part of something else. So I felt that royalty free was the appropriate license to use for that. Similarly with this one of, uh, of Puddles um, in Salford, I went for royalty free with that simply because I thought it's probably going to be used as a background image for something and again it's going to end up with multiple uses and it's the sort of thing which would go in royalty free collections of images that businesses would have. Again, same, same with this one, same purpose, would get used as a background. Sold this a couple of times as royalty free, don't know what it has actually been used for. This one 
I went with royalty free for it, has sold once. I thought it's the sort of, sort of thing which uh, might get used by uh, authorities or organisations which are promoting um, a sort of green um, activities, about going out, and, uh, about walkers, ramblers associations, things like that. And I could imagine that one being used as a detail image in a number of things, but being kept consistent, being used across a number of things. I went with royalty free. It could quite easily have been a rights managed one, and it's almost a toss of the coin on that one. I decided with royalty free. Again, royalty free for this particular image. It's a very generic image, no problems with light, with uh, model release forms or property release forms with something like that. It's very generic. I went with royalty free. Uh, the Italian flag. Again, I went with royalty free with this one. Uh, I thought it was a generic image, the sort of thing that a company or an Italian company might, might choose to use within their website, within the branding and their advertising. And it, I was targeting, targeting it at businesses where they could use it across the board in various things. Tutankhamun's death, death mask. I chose rights managed for that. Several reasons for it. First of all, it's clearly there's a property issue there. It's owned by uh, the Egyptian government and the, uh, the, the museum in Cairo. But also the market that's going to use that are going to be things like travel guides, travel brochures, and uh, the travel industry in general. And they're not, on the whole, they tend to buy for a particular publication and I was targeting um, that market. So I don't want it in a library that they can keep churning out again and again in that image. I wanted them to come back to me to buy it again and to buy it again and to buy it again. So rights managed was the, the most appropriate one there. And I'm happy to say that I have sold it quite a number of times, sometimes several times to the same client which wouldn't have happened had I made it royalty free, because once they had got it royalty free, they'd have been able to carry on using it. Beach scene with waves on the beach. Uh, that's, to my mind, is classic royalty, uh, royalty free. Uh, it's the sort of thing which would get used in multiple PowerPoint presentations, part of an image library for a business. And so royalty free was what I chose for that. Similarly with a post box uh, image, uh, companies with that would probably want to use it on various things in publications to say here are our contact details on their website, for contact details. It's a classic business, business type image, so royalty free for it. Again, the statues of um, uh, St Michael and Satan at Coventry Cathedral, that is travel related, so the travel industry by an image at a time for particular publication, particular travel guides. I've sold this, I've lost count of the number of times I've sold it and sometimes I think it's the same buyer coming back uh, wanting an extra license for it. So rights managed was the obvious choice for that. This paper clip turned out to be an interesting one. I went with rights managed. It could easily have been royalty free but I went with rights managed. I have sold it a lot of times and for, on some occasions for quite high figures. So I think my choice on this occasion for rights managed was justified. What I don't know is how many potential royalty free sales I have lost by not putting it as royalty free. All I can say that in this case uh, I earned a fair bit, or well, reasonable amount, uh, by selling it as rights managed. This one was very clearly going to be rights managed from the day I, I took it. Um, the reason being that the use for it is going to be for newspapers, typically articles about car tax. I wanted an image which would appeal to newspapers. They are not going to buy royalty free. They buy more often than not, they'll buy rights managed because they want a slightly lower price uh, for, for their use. 
and that's what it sold for. It sold a couple of times for newspaper articles, as far as I can tell that's what it was, it was a newspaper article about car tax. This image of uh, for sale signs, um, that had to be rights managed because there are trademarks in there and company names. So I couldn't make it royalty free, I could only put it out as rights managed. This image uh, of um, a semi-naked couple on a sofa, that actually sold for the front cover of a book. And uh, I sold it as rights managed, and even though I had a model release form for it, I could have put it out as royalty free, but I thought it's the sort of image that's not going to get multiple uses by the same client, so it's more likely to appeal to people looking for rights managed images. And there's a potential with rights managed to earn more, there's the potential to learn, earn less than the average fee for, uh, for royalty free. So I thought, felt that rights managed was the appropriate license for that one and it sold as rights managed. Similarly with this one, it was model released, it could have been used as royalty free but I chose rights managed uh, and eventually it was used by a newspaper uh, for an article about uh, debt and uh, managing uh, your finances. So I think the choice was appropriate and right for that one. Similarly, this one, again, it, I've chosen Rights Managed. One of the reasons I chose Rights Managed for this and for some of the other uh, images with models in is because the models have asked me to let them know where and how the images are used if they sell. And if it's sold as royalty free, I can't do that uh, because all I know is it has been sold. With rights managed, I get that little bit of extra information back from uh, from the libraries uh, about the uh, where media sector number of copies and things like that. So I wanted to be able to tell the model how the image was going to be used. So rights managed was the way I chose to sell it. And that is the end of all the images that were I've got to show you. It's a very brief overview of the difference between the two license types and why I take decisions uh, for different images. Hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, thanks for watching this in studio uh, video and uh, look out for future videos coming soon. Bye bye. This has been an in-studio video presentation by Ian M. Butterfield. All content and photographs are copyright Ian M. Butterfield and may not be reproduced without prior permission. For more information, including how to subscribe to this and other videos, please visit www.ians-studio.co.uk forward slash videos. Thank you.